to another episode of the uh, Marvel Masterworks podcast and vidcast. As always, I'm your host, Adam, and with me is my co-host, the Emerald Enthusiast himself, Donnie. Donnie? Hey, what's up, comic book fans? It's the man whose ring runs on fanboy energy, the podcasting machine, the big nerd in green. It's the Emerald Enthusiast, here to ask you the question, what if? Yeah, what if we came on a on Skype and recorded a podcast about a, a, a Marvel animated series? What would happen? Yes. This show, that's what would happen. But uh, I think all good things. I'm, yeah. I've been a fan of that title for quite a while. What if, just like the DC Elseworlds title. I think those I, are... I have an Elseworlds title for you, Donnie. Uh-oh. What if the Leafs scored one more goal against Montreal and won the series? <laughs> uh, I ha- oh man, I would really like to uh, really like to read I'd that. Like to title. live in that multiverse. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, but that's a, you know, the diff- that's a that's a different podcast for one day when the Leafs do make it past the first round. But anyway, yeah. um, who, whether I'll be hosting it or still alive, that's debatable. Uh, but um, we're obviously going to talk about we've, we've blown the. If you haven't figured out what we're talking about today, it's episode one of the latest Marvel Disney Plus series, the animated show What If. But what before if? that, we have some disappointing news. Not surprisingly, not surprising news, but disappointing nonetheless. So, Donnie, what's going on with Venom, not to be carnage? Unfortunately, it has been delayed as of right now. I think the latest that I read was October the 15th, but I also heard that it may get delayed again, possibly to January, maybe even to later next year. And, you know, my thoughts are this just very briefly. I really don't see this being a success if it is theaters only. I think there's too much trepidation in too many areas where COVID is bad. The Delta variant is changing the game here. I really think... Sony needs to find a way to put this on a streaming service because I think the interest is out there and people will pay to, you know, see this on a premium streaming service. Yeah, I I know they said they're moving into October. Mm-hmm. And I'm no doctor, so, you know, I don't have a degree uh, of that sort. I have a degree, but it has nothing to do with medicine or or you know, uh, I'm not an expert in in, uh, in virology. Is that what you call it? Yes. Virology, yes. Yeah, see, I don't even know what it's called, so how can I be an expert? <laughs> but anyway, uh, but I could go on YouTube and make up a bunch of crap, and people will believe me, because apparently that's the situation we're in. Anyway, um, but, you know, they could say that, yeah, we're, we're, we're putting it in October. I hope I'm wrong. I, I hope to God that, that I, I would love nothing more to be wrong. But I just don't see the situation getting any better in October when kids are full, ba- you know, full bore back in school. Yeah. We're at the start of cold and flu season. This, you know, the variant and, and is still running rampant. I, I just don't see them making that October date. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But I just don't see it. Um, Again, I don't want to get preachy or tell anybody to do th- things because it's your right to do whatever you want. But imagine, speaking of what if, Donnie, what if the majority of the population had common sense and got vaccinated? Guess what? We'd be in a different spot right now. Exactly. The situation wouldn't be as bad, and we'd probably be watching Venom on the intended date it was supposed to come out. But uh, what do I know? Again, I'm not a doctor, but science and, and, and numbers and facts tell me that that would yes. be the case. But Data, data. Um, Irrefutable proof. What I can say is that I agree with you in that I think it's time that studios like Sony that don't have... Um, their own streaming service, partner with one. Uh, I look at either Netflix or Amazon Prime. You could still do a day and date release. So you have the, the to have whatever date you're going to put it out on, put it out, but also have it available on streaming. If you're going to sell to Amazon, because look, 
again, and I'm going to keep pointing this out, not because I don't like coming to America too. I don't care for that franchise either way. But what I'm saying is the fact that Amazon Prime paid $120 million to have that movie exclusively stream on their thing. Mm -hmm. I think you can get $200 million for Venom, Let There Be Carnage from Amazon Prime or Netflix. Yes. Well, and it's, you know, I'll say this. I enjoyed coming to America too quite a lot. That's right. not something that I would have chanced at all going to the theater for. Right. But as right. a streaming service, you know, it was a very enjoyable right. experience. Yeah. And, and that's fair. It, I mean, it may be a good movie. It's just not like I... If I'm bored one one day and I got nothing else to watch, I might I might watch it. But mm -hmm. it's nothing that I'm like, oh my God, I got to watch that. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, uh, if you, and if you've never seen the original, you've got to see the original too. No, no, I've seen the out, original. So, yeah. It's just nothing that, that, that makes me yeah. leap out of my seat. Oh, got to watch yeah. that. Um, but so I don't know. I think even if you can get like 150 to 200 million for Venom, Let There Be Carnage, let's be honest, you're probably at least covering, you know, the production budget, mm -hmm. which is better than what movies are dealing with now. Like I know they're touting Free Guy, that's projected to make about 26 million or something like that this weekend mm -hmm. a success but let's be honest it's a hundred plus million dollar uh, movie to make it's pg-13 and it's being sold on the star power of ryan reynolds and we're and you're celebrating a 26 a potential 26 million dollar opening weekend right yeah that's nothing to write home about yeah you're not going to make, and that's an exclusive theatrical. They're not going to make their money back. Because mm -hmm. to, to, to make a profit, the rule of thumb in, in, in Hollywood is that to make a profit, you have to make 2.5 times your production budget. Right. Yeah, that's the old rule, yes. Uh, I don't see... Free guy doing about what two hundred fifty? If it if it is a hundred million dollar budget, which I think it might be more, do I see him making two hundred fifty million? No, I, I don't. Yeah. Um. I, I, you know, I mean, again, uh, Jungle Cruise, which I saw and was very funny. Uh, I saw it on, on Disney Plus, and I thought of you. Uh, with the dad jokes, uh, <laughs> if you were more tanned, you could have played the rock part. Uh, but, no, rock, uh, rock is, he's a couple inches taller than me and quite more well, I mean, yeah, you'd have than to put, I am. But, you yeah. have to put stilts on or, or you know, like inserts into your shoes. But yeah, We I have similar that. heads, though. I got to say, yeah, I like yeah, that. Well, set. that's what I was going for, the head. Yeah, the was, little cap, the little yeah. cap on the big head. I like that. So Yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, but no, I mean, even that, opened to $35 million. But again, it's PG-13, based off a popular Disney ride, starring the world's biggest entertainer right. today. Mm -hmm. I should have said most electrifying, but I digress. <laughs> and, and sure, I think it's up to like domestically $72 million now. But it costs $200 million to make it needs to make 450 million to even be considered profitable right the, the numbers sim they simply are not going to happen yeah. with theatrical only releases not yeah. for anything and sure look did did warner brothers sacrifice the, any potential box office for their films by putting them you know available for essentially free uh on hbo max the same day as release, yeah, they probably sacrificed box office, but they knew they were going to take a loss anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, so again, the, the the message is to Sony and, and even to like, uh, I think Disney Plus is throwing Shang Chi to the wolves, mm -hmm. or sorry, Disney, not Disney Plus, by making it a, it a theater only screening. Yeah, I, I think that's stupid. Um, because I'll tell you right now, the only reason I saw Black Widow is because it was available on Disney+. Plus. I wouldn't have gone to the theater. As there's much as a, I yeah, love... There, 
The only way I'm going to a theater at this point is if there, there's a drive through That's actually where I saw Jungle Cruise. If they somehow yeah. get Venom, that's yeah. going to be Carnage. I'll go there. Like, but, like to me, here's an example. I remember I said... Drive in, not drive through. I don't know yeah. how many times I'm going to well, make that. I mean, can you imagine? You can, get, <laughs> you can get a burger and watch a movie at the same time. It's great. Uh, or at least the opening. Like, you drive through right as the opening credits are going. <laughs> you see about yeah. 30 seconds. Uh, anyway, um, but... Um, but no, like, remember how I said that I wanted my first movie back to be <laughs> the Batman in 2022? Yeah. I'm not even confident in that at this point. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, it, are we going to be in it? Because I remember way back when I said, don't worry, Donnie. Once the vaccines start rolling out, we're going to get out of this, this, this. You know, we'll start getting out of this thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy, was I some naive fool. Because... Yeah. I trusted the rest of society to have common sense. Yeah, to, uh, have to act rationally. That's yeah. not not happening in a number but, of different ways. Yeah, so, like, to me, the good thing that Warner Brothers has going for it is that I just read, I know this isn't a DC podcast, but indulge me. I read the other day that starting in 2022, their theatrical release window will be 45 days, mm-hmm. and then it'll be available on the on you know HBO Max or streaming. Okay. As much as I, you know me, Batman, you know me and Batman. It's like they love at first sight. For back when I was four. <laughs> but um, if I have to, if I, if we're still here, if we're still in this exact same spot or or similar in March of 2022. Then Adam's gonna wait. See, I'm talking to myself in the third person now. Adam's <laughs> gonna wait 45 days. It works for The Rock. <laughs> yeah. Adam's gonna wait 45 days. Log off of, the, of social media entirely for <laughs> basically 45 days. Because I tell you what, if some idiot spoils the Batman for me on social media, you're gonna see DDTs, rock bottoms, power bottoms, <laughs> the whole nine yards. I'll come and find you like Liam Neeson, and I, I'll, I'll get you all. Anyway. So I'll, get I'll hold them for you. We'll do the doomsday device. Yeah. So <laughs> I'll get online. I'll get offline. Wait 45 days. And then, you know, don't get me wrong. It's, I'm going to be in, like, I'm going to be doing the Judge, Judge Judy gift where I'm doing, you know, <laughs> every day for 45 days. But I'll wait. It's just as simple as that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So start, start studios that aren't Warner Brothers and Disney and even Warner Brothers and Disney. You guys better start. You better just accept that streaming. <laughs> if things keep going the way they're going, it's the future. Yeah. Like I said, I think if somewhere Venom Let There Be Carnage was offered on a streaming service for, say, $30, I think oh, there's yeah. a lot of money to be made. But yeah, but the, like I said, the, the, to me, there's no doubt in my mind that some streaming service would pay $200 million for that. Sure, sure. For that property, yep. and then Sony's, and then Sony's laughing because whatever they make theatrically would be a bonus, mm-hmm. and then physical media, because there's still those that love the physical media, will be another added revenue stream. Then you're laughing, right? Yeah. So yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with you. I think there there are ways to handle this, but I don't think theatrical only releases right now. No time in the future, in the near future, I don't think that's the way to go. I, I'm not pushing the. Maybe we'll be back to normal in 2023. We'll so, see. Shazam 2, maybe <laughs> I'll be seeing you in theater. <laughs> um, good God, people, come on. Get, I, I know I said I didn't want to get preachy, but get the vaccine, wear a mask. It's not that hard. Anyway, let's talk about some good things. Yeah, let's let's get to what if episode one. What if Peggy Carter became Captain America? What if she became the first Avenger? So, well, what was your initial impressions here? I got to be honest, Donnie. I'll say it right off the bat: blow the lead, whatever you want to call it. Um, this was probably my favorite premiere of the Disney Plus Marvel TV shows. I absolutely love it. I, I and I'm just going to say it right up front as well. You know, uh, Haley Atwell 
she is a badass, whether it's in, as Peggy Carter, is a badass, whether she is the live action, playing it in live action, or animation. And speaking while we're on the subject of, of, uh, of Haley Atwell, Donnie, because you know I have to go here. I know where this is going. You know, you know something, can I tell you what happens when I see Peggy Atwell? Just keep it PG-13. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I I thought it was great. Uh, I I don't know what some people are, are thinking when they say they don't like the animation. I love the it. animation was top notch. Very fluid. Uh, yeah, and I think this is a positive, but I think it looks like a motion comic. Mm-hmm. And I like that. I think it's cool. So yeah, what are your, some of your general thoughts? Uh, you know, the, the storytelling here. was very brisk. Yeah. It was familiar to people. By the way, she is Captain Carter. She's not Captain Britain. Yes, we see that she's actually British in this, and she has a similar costume. But this is not her being Brian Braddock. This is her stepping into Steve Rogers' role from the first Avenger. No, she could be Captain Britain in this universe. Like, she could be the... I mean, they didn't call her that, but she could be that. They, they didn't call it, but again, they didn't, like, pivot out to that story. They kept it within yeah, the Marvel yeah. Cinematic course, Universe. Yeah, yeah. And I just, I really like how how it went along, how brisk the pacing was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it felt familiar, but it was enough of a pivot to, like, keep you guessing with yeah. what was going to happen. Yeah. And I thought all the characters were used very well. And again, Haley Haley Atwell's voice acting, amazing. Uh, Josh Keaton, yeah. you know, as uh, as uh, Steve Rogers. No again, relation to Michael Keaton, but he's still cool. Yeah, uh, cool. You know, <laughs> uh, you know, Green Lantern at one time. So uh, yeah. Uh, that's right. Yeah. Exactly. So bring yeah. it right back. Wasn't he Spider Man too? Also Spider Man. Yeah. Oh, there you go. See, so keep it in the Marvel. I know you have a penchant for mentioning Green Lantern, but you know. <laughs> Try to keep it within the Marvel, you know. Right. You know. That's okay. But I, if you want to hear, I mentioned the Batman, so you can mention Green Lantern. Sure. That's fair. If you want to hear more about Green Lantern, you can listen to the Emerald Echo podcast and the vidcast right here on YouTube. Indeed, so, and we have a Green Lantern podcast up right now that's performing quite well, so we'll check it out. Yes. Yeah, you know, I, I liked, you know, the idea. Uh, first of all, I like the setup of Peggy taking the serum. That yeah. it was... It was a moment well, yeah, when... Okay, so let's get right into specifics. Take us through the episode. Let's go, yeah. Okay, so it opens up much the same way uh, as the first Avenger, where we have Steve getting ready... It opens to... up exactly the same way, the Marvel logo and everything. It's great. Sure, yes. sure. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, can I tell you, I really love... Just before you get into the specifics of the episode, sorry to cut you off, but... Mm -hmm. I really love the intro and the voiceover by Jeffrey Wright. Uh, oh, yes. Who, who, spoiler, is also going to be Commissioner Gordon in the Batman. Uh, uh, but um, he just has that voice that will suck you into anything you're watching or listening to. Like, if Jeffrey Wright decided, you know what, somebody's going to pay me to read the phone book, I'd listen to it. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I, I really like, I like the intro. Very ominous, yeah. Yeah, and what was the line of prism of possibilities? Mm. Saying yeah, that, like, how they, yeah. like in the intro, they all broke apart and you see different things and it's all. Oh. Yeah. And, you know, we're obviously going to see more on this series. So, yeah. anyway, yeah, I like the, you know, the idea. We saw the very familiar scene that Steve was getting ready to take the super, super soldier serum. Yeah. Yeah. And Peggy decides to stay close this time. She's in the room and she foils an attempt. You know, to, uh, and I'm assuming it was a Hydra person. I don't think they actually ever named the person, but an yeah, attempt. Just running from Hydra. Yeah. yeah <laughs> an attempt to foil the, the, the transformation. Yeah. Steve is shot. He's wounded. He can't get back in the machine. Right. And so she has to make the decision do I risk everything being lost here, or do I throw caution to the wind and risk my life? And go into the machine and take the serum. Yeah. Which I thought it was very much in keeping with the character of Agent Carter to do the brave thing yeah. on a moment's notice. 
regardless of what anyone else thought. And we saw her encounter a lot of misogyny in this. And I also like the visual of how concerned Steve was for her. Yeah. I like the dynamic here between the yeah, two of them. You can tell her was so smoochy, smoochy. You know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, just to echo back to what you, you, what you mentioned, sure. her being close to the room is the, event, is, the, is the one choice that causes the ripple effect to change everything. Because mm -hmm. that's what the Watcher said. You know, one choice could, make, could alter the universe or multiverse completely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That one choice. Yeah. And that was and the choice. So, yeah, that was the choice, and then from there we see a, a number of choices after that, a number of events that lead to this different version of the first Avenger. So she comes out of the machine, and obviously she has changed. She's taller. She's much more broad. She's stronger. I don't agree at all with some people who said that she wasn't feminine. I don't know what those people are on. Hey, listen, I know it's a cartoon and all that. Uh-huh. But she's still on the list, even in cartoon form, and slightly more jacked. Again, mm -hmm. let, let's make a distinction. She's not, like, China jacked. Well, you know, it, to me, the first thing I thought of when she came out was Jade Cargill. Yeah. You know, I, tall I, and, and muscular and... Can, can, I, can I do it, Donnie? You, I mean, you mentioned another one. <laughs> Jade Cargill, you can, put, you can bench press me any day of the week because... <laughs> You're on the list, too. There, let's continue. <laughs> but, yeah, so she comes out, and she becomes, again, they don't call her Captain Britain, even though she has the Union Jack on yeah. her costume. She is Captain Carter. Yeah. And so then she's the one who makes, you see a condensed version of the first Avenger here. Yeah. You see her try to turn the tide and successfully turning the tide. And then at the same time, we also see a different, storyline for Steve Rogers that I appreciate it. Now, before we get into what happened to Steve... Go ahead. Uh, what if Steve didn't go on the uh, on the, on the the roids and, and stayed skinny? But anyway, um, <laughs> the, the... You mentioned about the, the whole thing about misogyny and, and sort of we encounter all that and yeah. Peggy Carter in a different way but still being the same you know, making the right play, make it, you know, being the, 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 the strong, uh, um, sort of important, mm -hmm. uh, self-sufficient woman who can handle herself. And at that point in, in, in that period of history was a, uh, definitely a male only field, which is military service, you know, back then. And even in the winter soldier or the first Avenger movie, you see, Women were there to to be the dancing girls beside Captain America on the stage show for the for the troops. That was the role back then. And even in the live action movie, Captain America First Avenger, Peggy was the exception to the rule because you know I guess the Brits were more advanced in terms of their you know, thinking at the time, or that's how they played it off, uh, and, and what have you. But so she's doing the same thing that she did in the live action movie, but just to a different extent. She's breaking yeah. the barriers. You yes. know what I mean? And I like the fact that she threw it in the guy, the old guy's face. You know, the military dude was like, oh, you shouldn't be even be in a room. And then after when she was... Yeah, General Flynn. Yeah, when she was yeah. making that plan, before they go into that montage, remember the, the, it was the Captain America montage? Oh, yes. Was, oh, which was all, yeah. And I, I love the, the music. The yeah. music added to that, like, you know, uh, the, you know that, that kind of, you know, vintage montage. I love yeah. it. Yeah. And they did the same montage with, with Peggy. Uh, but... Um, when they were making the you know the strategy in the strategy room, the guy the guy the goof goes to interrupt her and she says, "You're lucky to even be in the room." Even be in the room, right? So basically, <laughs> know your role and shut your mouth, buddy. Um, <laughs> and that's what he did. Uh, but yeah, like all that stuff that echoed what actually happened in the movie that was pretty much beat for beat. I love how they it was a condensed version. Like I got to give credit to the to the you know the people involved behind the scenes because they condensed a two hour plus movie into 31 minutes. And, and did, did it very, very effectively. Well. Yeah. yeah. And the music, it sounded like the score. I, I don't think it was the exact same, but it sounded very similar to right. the score for Captain America, the first Avenger. Yeah. They definitely captured the, the spirit of 
the first Avenger, which I can't believe is now 10 years in the past. That's ridiculous. We're getting old, buddy. <laughs> you don't have to tell me that. that so, so, again, another... What if we really... stayed in our 20s, buddy? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, God. oh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, we just we need to find the Lazarus pit. Yeah, so we just anyway. how cool when you need him, or, or race, or however the hell you pronounce it. Right. <laughs> so... We see another familiar face in this, and that is the Red Skull, voiced by Ross Marquand, who was, you know, the Red Skull in the, well, the, the latest editions of the, the Avengers movies. He wasn't originally the Red Skull, but he did a great job. And we see here a similar plan, but instead of the, you know, climactic fight scene on the plane, as we saw in the first Avenger, we see that. He has a plan here to bring a creature that is very Hydra-like through a wormhole, through this device. That's what he uses the Cosmic Cube, a.k.a. the Tesseract. That's what he uses the Cosmic Cube for. Yeah. And be careful what you wish for, because that was the end of him, <laughs> because the creature crushed him. Yeah. I mean, and again, those are those little differences from, you know, the, you know, the, yes, we're dealing with something... Uh, yeah, very familiar, right? It calls right. back the first Avenger, but it does things also completely different and, and, uh, and surprising. So yeah. it's not stale in the sense that, oh, I've seen this. It's just insert Peggy Carter here. You know, right. it's not that. It's it's familiar, but very different. And yeah. I like that about the show. Right. And I like that we're seeing this idea that within the multiverse of Marvel, that there are all these threats Beyond just the ones we know, that there are all these, like, monsters. You know, we talked yeah. about the Elias from the Loki series, that there yeah. are all these massive immortal monsters that are out there that are part right. of the threats that our heroes deal with. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So instead of, in this one, instead of Steve going into the ice to stop a bomb, we see Peggy Carter, Captain Carter, she sacrifices herself to push the creature back into the wormhole. Right. Now... Before we get into the end, to, to, because we're going with the ending, yes. double back and talk about, let's talk about uh, what happened to uh, Steve Rogers. What's different about right. Steve? Aside from not getting the actual serum, because we right. talked about that. <laughs> As he recovers, you know, he, he recovers from the gunshots. Yeah, spoiler, he doesn't die. Right, he does not die. Uh, at least then. Stark, yeah. At least then. They, so what we see here with What If is that Marvel kind of moves up the timeline of the creation of the first Iron Man suit. Yeah. And Steve Rogers in this episode, they call him the Hydra Stomper. So, which, good, <laughs> which, which I thought was good. And by the way, I really enjoyed the Howling Commandos in this. I thought that was really yeah. cool. So, uh, Don, Now, Donnie, would you buy a figure of the uh, of the uh, the Hydra Stomper? As long as it wasn't a Build-A-Figure, as long as it wasn't like $70. Yeah. Yeah. Because when I was looking at it, I'm like, I think Donnie would buy that. A lot of good. I would definitely buy. In fact, I think there is a, ca a uh, Captain Carter figure out. So, or uh, one is coming. I think I saw See, that. See, like I, I, now when I watch these things, I'm like, if they made a toy of that, I bet you Donnie would buy it. <laughs> I can't buy everything that I want because, like I said, I have no space in here as is. But yeah, I and you know I like the dynamic again. Here we see things reversed. Remember in the first Avenger, it was you know. Um, uh, Peggy Carter saying, you know, Steve, you owe me that dance. We yeah. saw the reverse here with her making the sacrifice. And she's like, yeah, I'll, I'll give you that dance Saturday night. And then she pushes the creature into the void. And then... Oh, 70... she, <laughs> she pushed yeah. the creature into Twitter? No. She said the void. So... <laughs> right. <laughs> it, the, the creature is less frightening than Twitter sometimes. So... Isn't that a sad motion? Uh, <laughs> but we also see this episode end in a similar way. Captain Carter comes out where in a where similar Loki place. Yeah. yeah, in a similar place. Yeah, and we see Hawkeye and Nick Fury, yeah. and he gives her a similar speech that he gave Steve Rogers in at the end of the the first Avenger. He's like. It's almost 70 years later. Yeah, because she says, we're we Steve. Mm -hmm. And because, because it's supposed to be 
the Nick Fury played by Samuel Jackson, even though it's not him voicing it. Um, I, ha- I, anytime Samuel L. Jackson does something, I expect him to swear. So when she said, <laughs> when she said, where is Steve? And I'm not going to actually say the word, but I expected him to say, it's been 70 years, then mother of first dead. <laughs> Another Which thing I, I, I would have said, I would have, I would have died laughing if that would happen, but you know, yeah. it's Disney, they would never allow that. No, exactly. Yeah, you don't want to do that. I will, I do want to say another thing too. One of my favorite scenes, actually, maybe my favorite is um, Captain, is Captain America, is Captain Carter and Steve Rogers in the Iron Man suit, the Hydra Stomper suit, them kind of tag teaming in the air, attacking, yeah. you know, all the, the uh, German forces. I thought that was really. Uh, visually pleasing, very innovative. I liked it. And right. like I said, uh, the animation, very fluid. Oh, so. the animation was, I loved it. It was beautiful. And within the anima- animation, the visual, like, I guess you'd still call it cinematography, like the, the, everything from the lighting, the look of it, the the backgrounds, everything looked so, so period, so beautiful. It looked great. I, I loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, the... Now, interesting question. Because the timeline for the Iron Man armors has been moved up, how does that change Tony's future? That's going to be interesting to watch. That, play out. That's a good. That's a good question. Will we see the answer to that eventually? I don't know. I'm sure we will. There's got to be. A, there's got to be an episode based on the Iron Man movies for sure. Because they said they're doing a, a an episode for every Marvel MCU movie. So. <laughs> You know, too, I got to say, there was, a, there was a really funny line in this, too. There was one point where Bucky falls, where the, the, the train yeah. scene, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Captain Carter grabs him and, like, pulls him back up. And he's like, oh, you almost ripped my arm off. Yeah, which so is I a like, reference to, yeah, that, <laughs> to, yeah, to him losing the arm. So, yeah, I thought that was arm. funny. Now, again, Donnie, does, does that mean that he does not become the Winter Soldier? Obviously, right, because... Well... That's, you know, again, that's another good question. Or is, our, or is, is every episode going to be its own multiverse? Like, is that how yeah. they're playing it? Like, mm-hmm. interesting questions to be asking, but, yes. you know. Well, we will definitely cover it right here. Well, well when, you know what? When, when, the show is called, when the show is basically named the question, what if? Right. It only makes sense that after every episode you're left with questions. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, that's how the the common title goes. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of just crazy scenarios addressed yeah. in this series. So, yeah. So, yeah. is there anything else you wanted to mention, or do you are you, you confident that we covered? No, I definitely like how this played out. I thought, you know, first of all, this is a logical starting point, and yeah. I think this sets the tone. And you know, people, I know that there are some people out there who aren't into animation. The animation, I think, was so good and so fluid and slick. I think it could have pulled some people in who may not have watched otherwise. Yeah. and I, I, It's worth noting that I read an interview with... It might have been Kevin Feige or, the, or one of the heads of the, the animation that did this. And they said that some of these characters could make their way into live action. Mm-hmm. So... Some of these hey. alternate characters... And I have a feeling that Captain Carter is going to be one of them. If Haley Atwell came back as Captain Carter in live action, I'd, I would welcome that. Like, what if that is their Captain Britain movie instead of doing... I'd watch it. Mm-hmm. And i gotta, I got to apologize right away to, uh, to, uh, to our resident uh, Alfred slash, for this purposes of this podcast, Jarvis. Um, uh, Stephen, and I have to say... You know, you're the best, buddy. But 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 Haley Atwell is quite easily the best uh, export that uh, the UK has given North America. I just <laughs> want to throw that out. There. Yeah, I, that's I can, covering a lot now. Yeah, we owe <laughs> we owe England a lot over here too. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So what are your thoughts? I mean, encapsulate everything and give us a rating, sir. Like I said, I think to me. I think it speaks volumes. First of all, I'm a sucker for alternate timeline multiverses, so this is right up my alley. Uh, this like show. That. I think it's a, a genius idea to, to do 
a twist on every Marvel movie. Mm -hmm. And for my money, this was the best premiere of a Marvel Disney Plus show to date. So I absolutely loved it. And my rating, I, I like I have zero complaints with this this episode. So my rating, like you know, accordingly is an A plus. Okay. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and give it an A. Maybe a couple of tiny little things I would have done differently. Like one thing, and I, I know people like you know uh, Haley Atwell. I, I thought she could have had a helmet, but tiny yeah. little things like yeah, that. Yeah, I see. Yeah. That's the only like t there would have been just tiny things I would have made. Yeah, yeah. So, but no, that's uh, our take on episode one, and we'll be back. Uh, let's see. Uh, if we're able to squeeze in a review of episode two, we'll do it. If not, we'll do two and three together. We'll figure it out after the show. But we'll be back to cover the rest of the series as we go along here. Uh, but. Uh, if you want to continue the conversation regarding what if or any of the Mar uh, the Marvel Disney Plus series that are upcoming, um, where can they do that with you, Donnie? You can find me on Twitter as the Emerald Enthusiast. Let's talk comics. Let's talk collectibles. Let's talk Green Lantern. And if you want to find me on social media, you can at Adam underscore Leeds fan. We also have the Facebook group, which is in the link below. Click that. Ask for permission to join the group. We'll um we'll add you and we continue the conversation there if you don't want to visit my twitter the, the, you know because you don't want to see my, you know, my 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 takes my hot takes uh then you can just follow at mmnpdc which is the podcast network uh, twitter uh, uh twitter um, handle no hot takes are posted there it's pretty much just the episodes themselves <laughs> but if you ask me a question or you know, you know, you want to talk there, we can do it there as well. <clears throat> but before we go, I just want to remind you to please uh, like, subscribe to the channel on yes. YouTube. And we want you to remember that Marvel's What If is forever. From the first choice that changes the MCU to the last. So long, everybody. So long, everyone.